Hey guys, it's Todd here. So today I'll be explaining the interquartile range. And to help me, I've got this very exciting example on the number of books which I read each month last year. So I, I kept a log. Whenever I'd finish a book, I'd write down that I'd read a book. And I basically just tallied them up for the end of each month. So month one, I, which is January, I read 12. Month two, February, I read three. March, I read four. April, I read five. May, I read seven books. June, I read 9 books, July, I read 11, and we get the idea. August, I read 6, September, I read 2, October, I read 1, slow month in October, November, I read 8, and December, I read 10. So, picked up my form back in November and December. So, we're going to use these to calculate our interquartile range. But firstly, it might be handy to have a look at what our quartiles are. So, a quartile is basically a boundary. So we have three quartiles in a data set. So we have what's known as Q1. Sorry. So we have what is known as Q1, which is our first quartile. We have what's known as Q2, or second quartile. We have what's known as Q3, which is our third quarter. And what this says is that if we were to divide the data evenly into four, so into four quarters, so if we divide data into four, or quarters, these quartiles tell us what percentage of data lie below that given quartile. So for quartile 1, 25% of observations lies below quartile 1. For quartile 2, 50% of observations lie below. And for quartile 3, we have 75% of observations lie below the third quartile value. So what we might notice is that if 50% of observations lie below our second quartile, this is also the median. So our second quartile is also known as the median. But that's just a handy little fact. So when we're calculating quartiles, it doesn't really mean much when I have all my data out of order. So what I'm first going to need to do is order my data. So to do that, I basically go through and I find the smallest value and I write that down first. So if you look through here, that was October and I read one book. So I'll, I'll cross out that one and I'll put it here. And then next least was back here in September. So that was two. And the next list was February, and that was three. Then, oh sorry, March was three. Oh no, February was three. And March was four. Then April was five. Then August was six. Then May was seven. Then November was eight. Then, June was 9, December was 10, July was 11, and January was 12. So conveniently, after I've kept this data, it's somehow managed to make up the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So I had a fairly strange book reading year. So what we can do is we can then divide this data into quartiles. So our first quartile will contain 25% of the data below that value. So what we want to do is divide our data into four quarters. So if we know we have 12 observations, and so we know we have 12 observations, so our n is equal to 12, then each quartile will have 12 divided by four observations. So each quartile must have three observations. 
So if we count through our data, we'd say one, two, three. Our first quartile value would capture these three observations. So our first quartile value would be here, just after three. So that would be our first quartile value. Our second quartile value would capture the next three observations. So it would go one, two, three. And our second quartile value would be here. And our third quartile value would just be three more observations on. One, two, three. So we can see that our third quartile value is just here. So these would be our three quartiles and as we can see it divides the data into lots of three. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we have four lots of three. So this is all well and good but we don't actually have any values at these observations because they lie right in the middle of these two ob other observations. So the first quartile is in between 3 and 4, the second quartile is in between 6 and 7, and the third quartile is in between 9 and 10. So what we're going to need to do is to, I guess, average and calculate the value of our quartiles because we don't have any observations there. So I'll just erase this for the minute. Because we don't have any values there, we're going to need to calculate them. So for our first quart quartile, the way we'll do this is we'll basically average these first two numbers here. So this 3 and the 4, and we'll take an average. So to take that average, we have two observations. So what we'll do is we'll add the 3 to the 4, and we'll divide it by 2. So we can see that our first quartile value becomes 3.5. And we'll repeat the process for our second observation. So we have, for our second quartile, sorry, we have two observations at 6 and 7. So our second quartile will be the average of between these values. So 6 plus 7 divide that by 2 to take the average, that's equal to 6.5. And then we'll do it again for our third observation. So for our third quartile, we have these other two observations here of 9 and 10. We'll take the average of this 9 and this 10. So 9 plus 10, and we'll divide that by 2, and we'll get 9 so as you can see, these values for quartiles are just the average of in between our two numbers. So once we've worked out all our quartile values, we can calculate what is called the interquartile range. So I'm going to write this down just on the right hand side here. So the interquartile range which is often referred to as the IQR, tells us the uh, basically the data which is in the middle 50% of observations. So that is the data that is in the very, very, very middle of our set. So to work this out, we can use a formula which exists. And the formula says that the interquartile range, or the IQR, which captures this middle 50% of observation, is equal to the third quartile, So it's equal to the third quartile minus the first quartile. And if we think about this just logically for a second, we know that 75% of data is below this Q3 
and 25% of data is below this Q1. So if we take away this 25% of data from this 75% of data here, then we're left with the middle 50% of observations. So if we go over to our data set and we have a look at this IQR, we can then calculate it. So we've already worked out our third quartile. So we know that our third quartile is down here and that our third quartile was 9.5 and we worked that out through the average of these third quartile values. So our third quartile was 9.5 and we've worked out our first quartile by taking the average of this 3 and 4 and we did that here and got this 3.5. So we can then see that our interquartile range is going to be 9.5, which is our third quartile, minus 3.5, which is our first quartile. And if we solve this out, we can solve it out and see that we get an interquartile range, which is equal to 6. And we would use the units of books read per month, which I'll denote as books per month. So that basically says our uh, middle 50% of observation takes on this range of six books per month. That's our first principles understanding, but we can also just say that our interquartile range is equal to six books per month. So there we have the interquartile range. Uh, there's practice which has gone up for you guys, and I hope to see you for the next video.